I'm joined now by Professor Helen Costigan from Heathrop College, University of London, who's going to talk about her article this week in America. Welcome, uh, Sister Costigan. Thank you very much. Now, your article is about the confessional seal and, and some efforts to perhaps, um, you know, civil efforts in different countries to maybe break the confessional seal. Maybe you could begin by talking about what is the confessional seal and, and what's the history and background of, of its purpose. The confessional seal guarantees absolute privacy for people who go to confession. It has had a long history. Um, there are a couple of martyrs to the, the seal. St. John Nepomutsky in um, Prague um, was uh, tortured by King Wenceslas IV. Not the good King Wenceslas <laughs> the <of> him. <laughs> this is a bad Wenceslas. Uh, for not revealing uh, the sins of the Queen. And uh, he was tortured and thrown off the Charles Bridge in Prague, where there was a statue to him now. Uh, he's seen as the patron saint of the Seal of Confession. Now, in the, in the code, it says that the seal is inviolable and it's absolutely wrong. But that translation is kind of weak one because the Latin is me fast, me fast est, which really, you know, it's absolutely, totally, whatever, wrong. Um, to betray the penitent, to directly violate the sacramental seal. And it's, it's considered as so serious that if a priest directly violates the sacramental seal, then, then he incurs an automatic excommunication, which is reserved to the Holy See. So application has to be made to the Holy See to lift that sanction. So it's a real serious issue. It's taken very, very seriously. And as you write in your article, I mean, it, pop culture has been fascinated with this for a long time. There are, there are films like, uh, one of Hitchcock's films uh, uses this oh, as I a confess, yeah. I confess, as a plot device. So. Mm. It's, and also it's been in Murder, She Wrote, um, <laughs> Law and Order. All, you know, it's, it's a fascinating thing. People just don't get it. Now, despite its history, there is this push, perhaps, in some countries to force priests, if they were uh, in certain situations, to report to civil authorities. It's the sexual abuse scandal that is bringing this about, I assume. Oh, it is. It is. Um, I think. I think people have been so enraged by the whole sex abuse scandal and the idea that paedophiles can go to confession, get absolution, and get away with it. I think that's the thinking behind it. Uh, and anyway, why should a serial sex abuser be afforded such confidentiality? That was one of the themes in the film *The Priest*, when a um, fourteen-year-old girl confesses to the priest that her father is sexually abusing her. And it shows his torment and not being able to do anything about it. Um, so I can I can see that um, the sex abuse scandal has been so um, grave that um, but people just don't understand what is unique about the sacramental seal. It's not just another form of confidentiality, but it's if you like this the confession is a sac a sacred space, if you like, and I, I can encounter with God. It's different from an encounter with a therapist or a counsellor or, or anything else. So it's the nature of the, the, the encounter which is so important. Now, uh, maybe we could just go through a little bit of where things stand now. It's in England and Australia, as I understand it, where there are some proposed laws that would force priests to, to, to bring this forward. It's in Ireland. Ireland. It's Ireland okay. and Australia. Yeah, it, that's interesting because it has been met by a lot, of, by a lot of statements from priests who say that they will never comply with that law. Uh, really, um, there have been, there's very little, it's never really been put to the test. And English law has been um, argued on both sides about this. Um, Ireland want to make it compulsory, as does um, Australia. But the, one of the problems I see is how do you enforce that? Because how do you know when a paedophile is going into confession? How do you police that? And a law that can't be policed um, isn't worth having on those statute books. Yes, you're correct. I mean, it's, it seems like if it's just between the penitent and, and the, uh, the priest, it's very hard to prove anything. And then, as you say, uh, priests have said that they would, they would not follow this law. So if it's going to be widely broken, it seems like... So it seems like... Is it a reality that these might come about, or is it just kind of politics as usual? I, I don't know, but I, I just don't see it ever hit the statute book, because I think there are too many issues, and I think a law that is, we can't enforce just is... It's not worth having, to be honest. Uh, I, don't, I don't see priests. I think some priests, there has been maybe a slight support for it. But to be honest, how many paedophiles go to confession? Absolutely no idea. Of course, as you kind of referred to there, there were some church officials who were sympathetic to this. 
is the actual the issue of sex abuse so disturbing to people that some church, some priest, even a bishop, has said that you know this this m might be might be workable. Yeah, I think um, I, th I think things are emerging in Australia now, which are truly shocking, and it's understandable. But I I just don't see it ever. I just don't see us go down that road. It is surprising. Although I've had you know one or two seminarians who've said, mm, I'm "Not sure about this," you know, and um, it's understandable. But um, I I I don't think it's worth it. I did know, I did hear of a case of a priest who, he used to say, if a paedophile um, ever comes to confession, he says his um, his penance is to turn himself into the police, which I thought was really interesting, because it demonstrates then a firm purpose of amendment. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Now maybe you could just end by talking about why the seal of confession is so important. You, you mentioned before it's a sacred space, but... Um, you know, for people who maybe are not Catholic or, or don't understand, maybe you can ex explain a little more why it's different from, you know, therapy or, or any other interaction. Yeah, because the, the priest there, if you like, is there in the person of Christ. He, um, so you're confessing to God, in a, in a sense. Well, yeah, confessing to God. I was very struck by something that Pope Pius XII said, I think it was 1952. He says, conscience is the most secret core and sanctuary of a person. You might remember that's in... Um, Dowdy McSpray's paragraph 16. He says, No one may be admitted there except the Minister of Reconciliation and only then by invitation. So it's really, you know, um, getting to the heart of the matter that conscience is a, 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 a secret court and sanctuary. Um, and so it's very different from any other kind of therapeutic encounter. It's There's a theological underpinning of that which I don't think people really appreciate. Okay, well, Sister Helen Costigan has the article in the current issue of America on this subject. Uh, we want to thank you for talking a bit about it with us. Thank you very much. Great.